Hey, it's time for Voice Over Body Shop. And we're remote again this week because somebody wasn't feeling well. But there, it doesn't matter because we still have a great guest for you tonight. We're going to talk about dubbing foreign films. So uh, our guest tonight is, is Harry Berkeley, who is a director. Say hello, Harry. What's up? All right. Thanks for having me. I've been, we're going to have lots of fun with this. And uh, if you've got a question for Harry about dubbing, this is, a, this is becoming big stuff now in the voiceover world. Uh, throw it in our chat room because I know Jeff is in there somewhere taking all this stuff down and, uh, and, and getting it uh, to us so we can ask him these questions. And any, any, anything else, Mr. Widow? No, I just, I'm excited. And I like All to right. wear my new nerdy headphones. Those are nerdy. All right. <laughs> we got nerdy stuff coming up here on Voice Over Body Shop right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, Remote Studio Connections for Everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Yes. A little late on the draw Sorry, there, Jeff. George. Anyway. Well, we're, we're back to our remote thing here just because... You know, I, our Safety. director wasn't wasn't feeling up to it. She's at at the at, she's at her desk. She's getting it done. Still working, and, and it's going to be fabulous. We're just not going to be exposed to all her germs, so that's the most important thing. Uh, and, and hers to ours, I guess. Well, well, have you, you had have, your, have you had your cootie check lately? i constantly. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, it's like. You know, I got the sniffles. Oh, is it an allergy or do I have the plague? Yeah. Anyway, hope oh, everybody yeah. out there is feeling well and yeah. uh, avoiding all the, the trouble that's uh, going on out there. But it doesn't seem to be affecting the voiceover business. In fact, uh, tonight we got a great guest who's going to talk about dubbing because dubbing became big time stuff during the pandemic. And uh, so we'll be talking about that in just a couple of minutes. Anything interesting going on in your uh, your world there, George? No. Uh, well, no, I mean, no bike just, accidents or anything. Uh, well, that's kind of almost. Well, no, I don't have one every time. No, I I, <laughs> I went for a little overnight uh, on Saturday, and I was hoping to camp in the beautiful pines of Mount Pinos Mountain above L.A. And it was actually uh, air quality score of one hundred and eighty. If you've checked what that means, that's real bad. <laughs> That means all the smoke from the Dixie fire, the farthest northernmost part of California is blowing all the way into SoCal. Oh, and boy. it's that bad. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's so, it, but yeah, I've been getting out there and, uh, and uh, riding as much as, uh, as, as I can because that's, that's how I stay fit and have fun. And falling as little as possible. As little as possible. I do less I, and less of that. I love the videos when things don't go quite the way <laughs> you want. <laughs> 
I try to anyway. get videos of other people falling now, and less less me and other, more others. Yeah, you know, there was that slow motion one a couple of weeks ago. That yeah, was, that that was that fun. Was that cool. was our friend Matt. He yes. was entertaining us with that fall. <laughs> yeah, but not entertaining <laughs> himself. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, we're going to talk about dubbing tonight. So let me introduce our guest, uh, Harry Berkeley. Uh, now, Harry is a uh, cinematographer and his 2016 short film, I'll Wait Here, played at several big film festivals, winning Best Documentary Award at the Bamberger Filmtagen in Germany. He's worked with publications such as The Hollywood Reporter, Glamour, Billboard, Vulture, as well as The Ellen Show and others. He was raised in the Austrian Alps. Harry graduated from the American Film Institute Conservatory with a directing degree, and he's now directing dubbing sessions for Horseless Cowboy Studios here in Southern California. So let's welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop, Harry Berkeley. Hey, how you doing? Good. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Staying doing healthy? We're, we're trying. Good. You know? Good. This is, and by doing it this way, we're all staying healthy. Very nice. That's very true. nice. Yep. Yeah, one day we'll be back in the studio. Yeah, eventually one of these back days. in the saddle. Yeah. Right back exactly in the saddle. Okay. Anyway, so let's talk dubbing. Now, this mm -hmm. is something that you know people were you know we were all, when this when I grew up in the '60s, it would always be fun to watch some Japanese film that was not dubbed properly, and things would be out of sync, and you know, uh, always fun, but. Things have changed a great deal now, and uh, but yeah, you know, there's a there's a big demand for for this kind of stuff. But first, let's talk a little bit about you and and how you know you got into directing. So you're originally from Austria, and mm -hmm. uh, but how did you find your way into cinematography first? Uh, pretty traditional route. I went to film school, uh, sort of video classes in undergrad, and then. Uh, where you just do everything and try to find what it is you want to do. And then I moved to LA um, and started directing when I finally knew what it was that I wanted to do. And then after that, I worked for a director as his assistant and then in video game production as a coordinator and ended up uh, sort of directing some video games and then the dubbing door opened up and I've been doing dubbing for many years now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and lately, the quickest way. yeah, it's been a barn door opening up for this kind of stuff. It's a, mm -hmm. a door of a hangar opened up and suddenly there was all this work. Yeah. So why, why is there such a need for so much dubbing work these days? I think, it, I mean, it's really platforms like Netflix who are shooting shows all over the world uh, all the time. And uh, those shows are uh, made by local filmmakers. So, you know, they really know that world and it's very specific to, to the place, has a, this local flavor to it. And uh, obviously they want to they wanna make that show global. So uh, we, we try our best to, to, to create the same energy for the show and, and create believable, organic English characters for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, the big networks um, and the big streaming networks are like, they were not, I wouldn't say desperate for material, but because things couldn't be produced here, there was a lot of existing material in Europe and, and, and Asia and stuff. So we've been seeing a lot of those types of things on there. Yeah, yeah. It, it really has not stopped ever since the pandemic started. It's been very busy and uh, we've done shows from Turkey, Korea, Germany, Poland, uh, uh, Thailand. We did the first Thai show. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's been, it's been busy and, uh, we're grateful for it. You know? Yeah. There's, I mean, there's been some great shows. I mean, there's some, some that have really hit big time, like, uh, the heist or Casa de Papel, which is a great series. I mean, it, apparently it was not a big hit in Spain, but once it hit Netflix, it suddenly became a worldwide phenomenon. And that one was very, very well dubbed. I mean, you can't even tell that, it, you know, mm -hmm. and I guess that's really the the um uh, the marker of you know, great direction and and really good acting 
Yeah, absolutely. I we have we work with SAG professionals, so you have that quality right from the start. Where when you cast them, you know that they have a certain amount of talent to begin with, and then it's all about collaboration and and trying to find the character. And I always tell my actors that uh, you know, my my voice actor, I, I tell them that uh, you there's a you have an on screen actor who created a space for you, but the character is yours. Like, create your own, and we create our own arcs. And uh, obviously, we can't change the story, but we do change the the lines a lot, the script, just to make it work uh, for us and for 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 the English uh, market. Yeah. What's What's really involved in in doing dubbing, though? I mean, it's. I mean, I remember that it used to be you'd go into a studio and the, you know, like, okay, here's the next scene coming up, and you'd hear beep, beep, mm -hmm. beep. And then, uh, then try to yeah. it up. Not like yeah. that anymore, is it? No, no, not at all. Thank God. Uh, now we're using a software called Voice Q. They're, I think, they're based in New Zealand, and it's kind of like a karaoke system. You have a on your on your uh, screen at the bottom. You have a streamer going from right to left, and as the on-screen actor's lips move. Uh, we have a little marker in the middle, and that's when you're supposed to perform the line. Um, and if you know, if if the the lines are scrunched together, that means that the lips are going 100 miles an hour, and the our actor has to speed up the performance. Um, but to me, it's a as a director, it's it's I think it's a freeing system for the actor because as long as they stay on pace on our streamer, um, we can. Uh, they, they they can forget about the rest, you know. They they can harvest the on screen actor's energy, but they don't have to look at lips, or they don't have to match uh, a voice or anything like that. So um, I think it's it gives the actor more freedom to play. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you're just joining us, our guest is Harry Berkeley. He is a director for dubbing, along with a bunch of other things. Uh, and if you have a question for him, throw it in the chat room in Facebook or in the YouTube chat room or wherever it is that you're watching this and can type something in. I know Jeff Holman is watching and he will be getting those questions into us because I, I think a lot of you are going to have a lot of questions about this. You know, I've done a fair amount of dubbing in the last in the last year. Uh, fun stuff. It's always fun working with. A, a different director, especially a director who say is in Dubai and you've got to be up at, you know, seven in the morning here in Los Angeles and they're looking leery. And you know, I'm like, the coffee hasn't kicked in yet. Um, <laughs> that's, that's always fun. But I mean, the, 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 the directions, you know, is, is always very interesting. I did, uh, something with an Egyptian show uh, a couple months ago and I'm trying to, you know, they're like, well, this guy is a real, He's a real ladies man. And I'm watching this and I'm like, um, okay. Somehow it just, it, it was a cultural thing. I'm like, well, what's going on here? The, he's trying to, he's trying to go on with this, this woman here who is wearing a hijab and all this. And I'm like, does that go on there? Goes, oh, it goes on everywhere. So, <laughs> so yeah. those, those are, those are fun. Yeah. Uh, but you don't do it all at once. It's done in, in little chunks, right? Yeah, it's done scene by scene. We start the top of the, the film or the show and go um, go to the end scene by scene and really uh, spend our time with with it. But I, I I I do run into local jokes all the time, you know, or local flavors I call it, you know, right, right. Um, because these shows are so um, they're they're not made for the world. They're not made for a wide audience. They're made for very specific you know, people in a, in a, in one country. And so when you dub it, you have to sort of translate that flavor to a wider audience. Uh, when these jokes come in, I, I, I know that a bunch of Turkish shows, for example, they uh, sort of, they're, uh, the dealing with alcohol is, is a very, uh, it's almost like how we deal with guns. You know, it feels like uh, it's, you know, when someone drinks in a Turkish show, that's that's a big no-no. That's a big uh, big red flag. Uh, but if you translate it that over here, then it's, it doesn't really have that impact. You know, unless you talk about underage drinking. Uh, so we try to always sort of 
we, we, we try to keep the local flavor there, but then sometimes we just have to change a few things to, you know, to make it a bit more global. Yeah. I, I, and it, it, I think one of the coolest things about it, and I think people should probably watch some of these shows, you know, like mm-hmm. I was saying, house of paper was really good. That was just it was so well written and, and all that. And because it was dubbed in English so well, it was like watching a Hollywood, uh, you know, series. And, mm-hmm. uh, but if, if, if you watch these shows, you can learn an awful lot about what's going on in the rest of the world. And I Absolutely. think that's, that's a fabulous thing. Absolutely. I agree. 100%. It's, it's, uh, and that's what I'm trying to say. We would try to keep, you know, the original intent of the filmmakers intact so that, that you get to experience that, uh, um, that local flavor. And it, it, there's, n- there's no point of, of Americanizing it. It's just sort of bring it to a bigger audience, but keep, keep the, the, the local impact. Yeah. Yeah. We ended up watching an awful lot of this stuff during the uh, pandemic. <laughs> it's like, you, you, we would get hooked on Turkish soap operas. It was, it was very strange. Of course, one, the one we were watching wasn't dubbed. It just had subtitles. And I'm like, they couldn't take time to dub this in. It would have been much better. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, but plus a bunch of other shows that are, that are just really, really excellent. Once again, if you got a question for uh, for Harry Berkeley, give us a you know, just write it down in the chat room, and we will get to it in just a little bit. So, I, I all the voice actors who are watching us right now and listening in, they're probably wondering, well, gee, couldn't I do this? What does one really need to do to prepare? I mean, the people do you know commercial voiceover, and they're doing narration, and they're doing all this other stuff. This is this is a little bit different, isn't it? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I would say uh, try it. I, I would say uh, come audition for it. I know Horses Cowboys is uh, they work with the major agencies, but they also and which is one of the things I love about them is they they work with emerging talent. They they find talent and um, and and local uh, you know voices as well so you know i once we had to record a a german show and there was a serving character but uh with a specific accent and i was like there's no way they can find this you know and sure enough they found this person in la who had that exact accent and uh, i think that's that's selling the dub you know that's that's really taking care of the details um, and then when you watch it, you know, you hopefully, um, you don't have to think about, you know, you don't have to think about the lip match or any of that stuff and you can enjoy the show. Yeah. What, what, what does one do need to do to prepare to do this type of work? I mean, you can audition for it, but you know, it's a, it's a new type of thing for a lot of people. And what, what is, what are some of the things people can do to try and, you know, get used to this, this type of thing? Yeah, it's 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 sort of weird because uh, the actors that we're working with they're they come from different camps. You know, you have theater actors who are used to being on stage and being big and out there and uh, trying to reach the last row. And then you have cinema actors who are very quiet and you know used to a close up. And and then you have uh, VO types who are either they're sort of coming from the documentary narration field or they come from a video game field and it all works. Uh, you just have to sort of adjust a bit. I think dubbing is sort of a dance between the engineer, the director and the actor uh, because the engineer is taking care of the lips, you know, meeting lip match is supposed to be almost a hundred percent, you know, um, and the actor has to stay on pace, has to be in the scene, has to perform. And me as a director, I'm aware that my that I ask my actor to, uh, you know, he's in this tiny booth, and uh, I'm asking him to be on a on a Greek beach. Uh, so it's it's this fine, you know, back and forth between actor, engineer, and director to to really come up with a performance uh, that works. And to me, what we're trying to do at the end of the day is to 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 make the scene look as organic. Um, as the original did. That includes efforts, you know, if he's breathing in, if he does anything visual, if he gets up from his chair, we want to get that, those efforts in and, and really, um, you know, get that, get that, uh, <laughs> that, that or- organic uh, matter to it. And so to me, it's, it's someone, you know, I would say just try it and, and see 
you know, how, how you're doing with a, you know, maybe with a small character, uh, you know, we're not giving a, a beginning actors or, or sort of first timers a, a major role with, you know, uh, many hours, but a few small characters, you know, and, uh, and, and you'll, you're on your way and, and, um, yeah. And yeah. it's fun. Most of our actors love it. Yeah. I mean, this, I mean, I'm sure you have some stories, you, you know, about some things and George and I wanted to ask you about that. I mean, you know, you were talking about, you know, you've got to do their breathing. My son mm-hmm. was doing a show where this character was constantly snacking. So we had to constantly have some Ritz crackers here or something. And he was most of the time we're watching the show. All you're doing is chewing, but that's all the guy does. Mm-hmm. But he had, he had a match to chewing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I mean, one of the first shows I've done is a show called playing with fire. And the story is riveting uh, in itself. It's about a guy who um, can have any woman in, 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 in his life, uh, um, but if he falls in love, he dies. So he's basically spending the entire show uh, sleeping with these women and making out with them, and you have to recreate that. And and um, there's a lot of uh, uh, stuff that he, you know, he has to kiss his hand or his his arm for for hours. But that's that just needs to be. Uh, we we need to grab that uh, for for the dub to work. You know. But that's the extent to which you you, you do. I mean, you don't literally bring. <laughs> like, could you bring your girlfriend in and say, "Honey, I got to do this dub." Uh, I've, no, I think no, methods, never uh, like that has never no. happened. But I did. Oh. I did have an actor ask me to punch him in the in the stomach, but, um, <laughs> no. which I declined to do yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I love when people when people you know. Uh, get into their performance. I think it's great. It's like, it's no different than, than when you're on set and you sort of lose yourself in the character. Um, uh, yeah. Mm. Now, now one of the things that happened as we were just talking earlier, the, the pandemic hit and mm-hmm. then suddenly there was this huge need for dubbing, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, maybe a bunch of people knew how to do it. I mean, it was, it was being done. You know, I, I was doing some stuff and I knew some other people that were doing it, but suddenly all of this material had to happen. So mm-hmm. you, I, I take it there were probably some technical issues that you guys had to deal with, you know, because George and I certainly did, didn't we? Well, when did it stop? <laughs> <laughs> it's while there, there is that. Yeah, certainly. I mean, we, I remember we walked out one Friday and, and never came back. Um, but then, yeah, so Horses Cowboy works with a studio with, with Igloo Studios in Burbank. And their engineers, they're just incredible. They just made it all work. They figured out a way how to send rigs to actors, set them all up remotely, or if not remotely, then they had the actor leave and they go set it up real quick. And um, we've had actors record in their in their closets, in their garages. And uh, yeah, I mean, thanks to them, we're we're still working and we're still it's 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 never yeah. stopped. Yeah. I had a lot of faith in engineering that to hear that. Like I kind of had this impression of a lot of engineers and studios and they're just not used to doing anything other than, you know, operating pro tools or whatever their job is. So they really had to improvise and they solved a lot of problems. Yeah. And they, they, they kept a lot of people's jobs. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and, you know, and, you know, it's in it when you're doing this stuff, you know, it's like they'll stop and go, okay, hold on a second. And you can, you know, because I'm an editor and, you know, George and I know what's going on on the other end, it's, you know, we can tell, okay, they're taking this and they're shifting it just a little yeah. bit over here. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, you, you know, you learn to be patient and, you know, and it's like, okay, we can, we can do this. Once again, we're talking with Harry Berkeley about uh, dubbing work, which is, you know, uh, it's, there's a lot of it out there right now. So, so where should people be looking to find this and how can they audition to do this? And, you know, I mean, you, you said you work with, with, uh, you know, with, with, with union actors, but I Mm -hmm. take it. There's a lot of other people that are probably qualified to do it. Yeah. Uh, that's true. I mean, we do have to work with union actors for most of them. Um, if, if they are looking for very specific types, uh, where it's really, you know, we need that one person, then, uh, we can get them into the union as well, but 
uh, we do work, uh, Horses worked with all the agencies and uh, Jobs for William, Breakdown Express, LA Casting. Um, yeah, and, and literally uh, once it was at a party and I found, oh, I found a voice there and that person <laughs> was in the show. So it's, it's I know it's, it's uh, it can happen quickly. <laughs> yeah. 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 And there's work out there. So. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and it's not just, you know, you're not your company. I mean, horseless cowboy is not the only guy who's doing this. Like, like I said, I've been doing it with, with European and middle Eastern companies and yeah. uh, Chinese companies. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a, it's a growing industry out there. So. The, yeah. Feeds the talent, a lot of people. <laughs> the talent are, mo are pretty much all union, but there are they all physically in Los Angeles or are you doing remote sessions? Uh, where are the talent actually being recorded physically? Well, now actually we're sort of, we're having talent go back to the studio and mm -hmm. uh, engineers, they're all vaccinated and, and uh, we have safety protocols where the the actor can now go into the studio. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a very safe space uh, now. Uh, yeah. I don't go in yet. Uh, so we try to keep as few people as possible there. But today I had a, my, my engineer was in Mexico and my coordinator was in Minnesota and I was in LA. So it's, it, it works wherever you are. Mostly people are based in LA, I would say, but we've done remote sessions before. Yeah, for sure. Or if like there's, if there's maybe a voice specifically you need, they're just not, they're just all out of town or they're work there on the road. You might even bring them in from another city, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've recorded people in New York and Austin and, uh, uh, people, you know, people seem to be moving away from LA. So, so we definitely have other places where we can record them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if, if, if you've got a good setup at home and those of you who are watching and listening to our show, you darn well better by now after watching this show for 10 years and <laughs> how to do it properly and sound right when you're doing this kind of stuff. Um, I mean, it, I, we don't want to ask you what equipment is needed. We, we tell people what really is needed out there. Uh, you know, but as we like to say, if it sounds good, it is good. Because they're, I, I'm sure these engineers are not asking, well, what are you using? And, you know, I'm, you know, unless you're on camera, I mean, because a lot of times you're doing this on, on, you know, over Zoom and over these, these other, these other platforms. So they can see what you're using. Uh, and hopefully you're not using a USB mic or something along those lines. Although <laughs> I'm sure there are people that are. Um, so you, but you have to be, you, you've got to have a good sounding studio for starters, I would imagine. Yeah, I um, definitely. I mean, you know, uh, my engineer could tell the difference from whatever mic they're using. I can probably. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure. It's like, oh, yeah, that sounds exactly the same like the previous mic. But they do know their stuff, so I try not to interfere and um, and 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 let them waste my time with technical stuff. <laughs> yeah. So how do you? how do you like to work with people? I mean, and, and if someone's going to be, if suddenly gets a job doing this and they go in there, how do you, how do you professionally present yourself and work with a director? What are you, what are you looking for and what works best for you and uh, with, with, you know, with another pro coming in? Yeah. Uh, I would say, you know, confidence is all, even if you have never done it before, I think confidence, not so much in sort of, uh, I can do it all, but like uh, confidence in a choice that you're making for your character. Uh, you come in and uh, if you're a main character, we've sent you the show most of the time or we've, we've told you what, what it's about. So come with a choice and, and then be open to collaboration with me and, and, and together sort of find, that, uh, find the right flavor for us. And, and, you know, I mean, I try to make it, I try to create an environment that, that is conducive to, to creating art. I, uh, it's a completely non-judgmental room. I, I, I want them to sometimes, you know, make a choice that doesn't feel right. So we know this one can, can go. And, and um, sometimes it's just delicate work too, you know, because there's, like I said, there's, there's rape scenes, there's uh, t stuff that is, it's not easy to record. And, and, mm -hmm. um, to me, uh, I want to make sure that, that uh, they feel comfortable doing that and performing, um, which is my number one thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's acting. Do it's they, acting. Do, yeah. Do, do, is there an assumption that they've seen, uh, read the whole script by that point or read their characters before? 
I mean, did, did, did they, they know what they're getting into at that point? Yeah, uh, they do. Main characters do. Like, if there is, if there is a tough scene to uh, recreate, yeah. um, then yes, we will let them know. Um, they don't usually see the script because we don't have paper anymore. We just have the, the voice cue system where they yeah. just see the scene um, for the first time. Uh, unless they're a main character, and then we send a few episodes to them to prepare. You know, So that's always helpful for them. But it doesn't happen always. You know, Sometimes the producers of the show don't want anyone to see it, and so we'll keep it, and, and we'll just have to make it work in the studio. That's fine, too. Works as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it, it's the first time, you know. I mean, you like, yeah. oh, okay. Although sometimes it's good to understand what's going on mm -hmm. in the actual story. So anyway, hey, again, if you've for got sure. some, yeah, if, if you've got some questions for Harry Berkeley about dubbing work, uh, put it in the chat room in Facebook or on uh, YouTube, and we'll get to those in just a couple of minutes. But right now, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. So don't go away. <laughs> I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did! I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beat old body shop. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge reward until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. From voiceoveressentials.com, it's the relationship savior, the multicolor LED VO recording sign. Not just a stock on the air or recording sign. It's our exclusive voiceover recording sign. This brilliantly lit LED 20 color beacon tells everybody at home, which is currently everybody, hey, I'm auditioning, recording, podcasting, narrating, or broadcasting here, and a few moments of relative quiet would be very much appreciated. What's more, the wafer-thin remote control lets you choose a multitude of options, from color to brightness, flashing to fade in and out. You can even set up your own personal codes. Red means I'm recording, blue, playing back, green, it's a wrap. Plug in the seven foot long cord and hang it on a doorknob or wall hook using the included chain. For voice workers, silence really is golden. And gold is one of the 20 colors you can choose from. Order yours now for just $69.95 from voiceoveressentials.com. That's voiceoveressentials.com. Getting into VO is quite an accomplishment. And accomplishing anything in the world of performance can be really tough. Getting great information is tough. Getting the right advice and mentoring is tough. Simply getting ahead is tough. And the best way to get ahead is to simply get started. Let's make it simple. To get started in voiceover, the best way is with VO Hero's free online course, Getting Started in VoiceOver. You'll learn everything you need to know to create a successful, satisfying, and profitable voiceover career. The link is really simple. Here it is. VOHeroes.com forward slash start. Again, that's VOHeroes.com forward slash start. Get ahead in voiceover simply by getting started. Go to VOHeroes.com forward slash start. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voiceover Body Shop. Yeah, I think it's important to mention also that, uh, wait a second, I've, oh, never mind. Hold on one second here. I've got to mute something. Oh, okay, never mind. 
just edit that out. Uh, <laughs> just wanted to mention that Harlan, I was talking with Harlan Hogan the other day, and he is, even though shipping costs have gone up, he is not raising the price or car- charging for shipping yet. So get your signs. Nice. Anyway, we're talking with Harry Berkeley about dubbing, and we got lots of questions from our worldwide audience out there that is hoping to jump into dubbing, hoping to jump into dubbing one of these days. Anyway, so you ready for some questions, Harry? Yes, go for it. All righty. Uh, do we have any from uh, from uh, Clubhouse yet? Nobody's in the queue yet, but I'll keep oh. an eye on the Clubhouse room. Uh, um, right, the so first one in the, the first one there chats uh we got questions from youtube and facebook this one's from ap white watts and the question is has anyone used voice cue for dubbing well we got the answer to that one (laughs) um twisted wave just added a video feature and could twisted wave now be used for dubbing well i'll answer the second question Mm -hmm. yeah no i don't think so but it's so unbelievably bleeding edge new that the thing you have to keep in mind with these technologies is the industry has to adopt them, learn them, vet them, and prove that they're stable and reliable. And it, I'm sure voice cue, you guys probably went through some period of vetting and testing before you were probably going to rely on it. Right. Hmm. Yeah. Harry. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, that was for Harry. Did, yeah. did, did it take no. you guys a long time to, to settle on using something like, voice cue did it have a lot of resistance you know using a new system uh you know what it was pretty smooth but again i probably wasn't in those meetings that was more there on the engineer side yeah i know i remember that the the guys came from new zealand once and sat in a session uh but um i i really like the software i think it's it's, it's great for the actors so um i'm not what sure was it's happening more of an engineer voice cue yeah. So what was the what was life before voice cue? How was it done? In, I, in a nutshell. In a nutshell. Uh, with paper scripts. Yeah. With paper scripts and but I don't remember. I I think I did a few sessions like that, and then we had iPads, but that mm-hmm. didn't work as well either. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I don't know what we would do without the software. It's great. Yeah. Well, clear, clearly the software has really improved the quality of these things. Like I was saying, just some, some of them are so well synced that you can't even tell they're dubbed. It, yeah. That is also a credit to our editors. So once we uh, finish our session, the in-session uh, edits, it goes to post-production and they spend minutes uh, per, per line to just massage it and, and make sure it, it, it fits uh, even better. Uh, so when, once we deliver the show, it's it's supposed to be 100% on lip match. Mm-hmm. So those are what we call, are they dubbing editors or dialogue editors? What, what do they call those guys? It's a good question. I don't know. I was curious. I like, call them editors. You see a million <laughs> credits, you know. On yeah, the show yeah. Sometimes you're like, is that, a di- is that the dialogue editor? Yeah. Well, I was curious. Yeah. All right, get the next one. J.S. Gilbert has an interesting question here. Of course. As he always does. <clears throat> uh, curious any thoughts on using descript to do adr when an actor can't be there apparently the documentary on anthony bourdain was completely done in his voice using the dubbing feature in descript i'm not sure what descript is george you familiar with that one at all i've heard of descript but i don't i've never used it <laughs> i don't know anything about it that's interesting i think yeah. it's an automated a- ai dubbing device ah. No AI dubbing. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Yeah, I, I, I you know, that would be an interesting one to try. You know, how are you going to direct AI? You know, I mean, I, we, I personally don't believe that it's going to. You can't use AI to do this stuff, and they're never going to be able to get the. I mean, that's what that's what you're really working with, Harry. I mean, you're mm-hmm. trying to get the subtlety of somebody's voice. Yeah, and how can you program that? I don't, you know. Have they I, talked about it at I all? I don't know. I hope it never happens. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I yeah, I, I, I'm sure that it's possible somehow, but uh, yeah, I mean, I love working with actors and hopefully, uh, you know, uh, that'll stay for a while. Yeah. Uh, you want to get the one from Victor Singleton there, George? Sure thing. And there's actually now one in the clubhouse. Oh, ah, let's go there Chris. first. So what do you say? 
Uh, Chris in Clubhouse, let's go to you. Oh, thank you. Hey, so much. sounds good. Appreciate you taking my uh, question here in San Francisco on Clubhouse. My question is two, two actually, one serious, one silly. Is there good money in dubbing for actors? And is your guest's favorite musical group in sync? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I have to think. Oh, oh. Wait a second. I, I got to hit the right button for that one. Hey, why isn't it working? That wouldn't be the one. I think the one you're looking for is. That was the one I was looking for. Okay. Right. That, uh, I'm not getting the in sync joke. Explain. <laughs> because you're doing things in sync. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. That's a dad joke. I thought it was like a reference to the fact that that band's, uh, you know, the production and they produce it all in Europe. And I thought there was some deep. So, I, I thought it was no. an engineering joke, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was a pun. We all feel <laughs> terrible. Okay. Anyway. Uh, Chris is serious is there, answer. Is, is there, there good money of, in this gig? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's union scale, you know, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, it is. But I mean, it, I don't, it, it depends. Like if you have, uh, if you're a main character and you are, you come in for three weeks every day to record. Uh, yeah, it's, it's good money. But I, I also think it's a nice addition to your, you know, your uh, theatrical uh acting because you can you can come in you know sessions are four hours long uh at at at, at most and it's you know it's 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 fun to be in the studio and and and, and do your four hours and go home and yep. you can still do half half of the day to do other stuff you know yeah. go auditions or something especially those early morning sessions i get to do <laughs> far in the people in the middle east Yes. Anyway. You want to <laughs> yeah. get that question from Victor there, George? Sure. Um, Victor asks, what's the best vetting process for companies that randomly approach you on social media to ensure their legitimacy? This may be really more suitable. This is sort of a general, I think this is more of a general yeah. question for someone who's maybe getting into voiceover, uh, not so much directly to what you're doing. Well, I mean, I could say one thing is that uh, at the end of, a Netflix show there's credits and after that credits there's the the dubbing credits so there there's uh company credits at the very end but really it's past the the on-screen edits uh oh, credits yeah. and then it's further down there there's yeah. there's credits for dubbing and 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 I would look I would look there yeah That's I mean I did, and those usually run longer than the show I mean like here's the Thai dubbers here's the Japanese dubbers it's and amazing. usually in the language that it's that whoever did it. So. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. But that's smart though. I mean, do your homework. Yeah. That's I mean, what I was going to say. How do you, yeah. how do you vet? Look for the, look for names that are familiar. I mean, there yeah. can't be thousands of names involved in this production world. There's probably a, how many of, of what, of you guys are there out there? Hundreds, tens. I mean, I don't know. I, I Hard yeah. to say. I, hard to say. You know, I know a few other directors who are working in dubbing, uh, doing different languages. So I don't know exactly mm -hmm. how many companies are out there. But yeah, there should be a bunch. Yeah. All righty. Question from Aria's voice, who's watching us on YouTube. What are the best qualities for a voiceover actor to have to succeed in the dubbing game? I sort of asked that before, but you can mm -hmm. reiterate on that one. Uh, again, like same sort of uh, qualities that make an uh, 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 on-screen actor. Just um, confidence in what it is that you want to perform. Um, a willingness to collaborate, I think, is crucial for any actor or director. Um, and, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's... How about improv? Is yeah. it helpful to know improv for dubbing? I would say... Not really, because there's only yeah. a few. Uh, whenever we do improv on in in the show, it's usually for a Walla character in the background somewhere Walla, that we're gonna right. mix uh, mix into oblivion, pretty much. So it's it's yeah. I mean, it, it you know, improv is always is good to have as a, a good tool to have as an actor. But I don't think in dubbing that's your main um, skill to have. So um, jargon uh, alert. You, you know, just explain in a nutshell what Walla is. 
for those that don't uh, it's a lot any, of don't know what that means yeah it's it's any character that is talking in the background um that is not on screen most of the time not on screen or they're on screen but so far back that you can't even see their mouth moving it's like the and it's just to create a voiceover it's like the extras yeah yes. pretty much it's like creating an environment uh, aside carrots, from your main scene carrots. Yeah. 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 I've sometimes I, you know, I've noticed that, you know, if like you were talking earlier about how fast someone can be talking and yeah. you've got to keep up with it. Mm-hmm. I, I, I imagine that, you know, and I I've seen this where they will edit the copy in the middle of the session, you know, that it doesn't really make sense so much in English. And we could probably take out this little section here and still keep it synced and stuff like that. I mean, I'm sure you've, that that's happened a lot in your sessions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was going to say maybe the third or the last thing to, to sort of train is in to work in dubbing is to, to know how to read fast. You know, yeah. if, if you, if you do karaoke, yeah, seriously, that probably a good uh, uh, preparation because you do have to, when they talk certain languages are very fast, fast lips, as we call them. Italian is very fast. Um, so you have to read very quickly, very fast. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I would say that's 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 pretty much it, you know. She had a part two question. I thought that was actually kind of interesting too about what's the best way for talent to present themselves to directors at a networking event if they're interested in dubbing. That's <laughs> yeah, you got to find who's question. the dubbing director at the networking. It's not. Yeah, I don't know how you. <laughs> So what do you do? <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, you know, I, I've had people on LinkedIn and um, it's usually, I mean, it, it's, you know, I listen to tapes um, mm-hmm. um, and, and I, I can do recommendations to my superiors and ultimately Netflix, but I don't make the the final choice, you know. So, but if I if I hear a voice or if I hear a a, a demo that sounds amazing or interesting or um, fresh, then I will definitely forward this. And I've done this multiple times, and uh, some of these people are coming back uh, a lot of times now. So I don't think anybody else asked this question, but I'm going to ask it. What is a demo? What is a demo like for a for dubbing, dubbing job? <laughs> That's a very good question. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, once it ends up on Netflix, you know, you you can find a way to 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 you know send yeah, it in, or you can real. yeah, you can point you it. it real. Yeah. You can point to it if it's a major character. You could say, watch this episode in English, and uh, you could get a pretty good sense of it. But there really um, isn't like a demo, like you know, the demo producers they'll. They'll stay sell demos. Okay? <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of them. Yeah. Um, there's not really, I can't think of a, a demo that's a dubbing demo. I have not seen produce. it either. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and you get a good feel for what a person can do in the studio when you, when you listen to uh, other stuff that they've done. Even on, on screen acting, I think you can, you can take a lot from it. So, yeah. So yeah. as, as a director though, you're, it's the casting director that picks the people. So, you're getting thrown into a directing session with somebody perhaps you haven't worked with before. And, you know, you've got to get them to do what you need them to do. So I'll, I'll bet that's a bit of a challenge sometimes. Uh, I would say 90% of the time it's cast very well. And once you get into a rhythm, sort of into a, you know, working into that dance between the engineer, actor and director, uh, it, it flows nicely. Uh, here and there, you have uh, odd things happening. I, I had one actor who could not laugh properly, and by properly, I mean like uh, organic, like just like you know, like laugh. Uh, and he just would come off really weird uh, hmm. on screen. He just wouldn't match the energy, and it came off artificial. That it stood out to everyone who watched it. So, you know, uh, those things happen, but. But usually, I would say it's well cast, and and SAC actors are just they're great. Uh, yeah, yeah, for a reason. Yeah, I love this question. I could, this oh, would be God. interesting. He says uh, from Amos Meters uh, on YouTube. He says, as a dubbing director, what are some pet peeves from writers you'd like fixed or things 
writers don't often consider. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a good question. Um, I mean, it technically, uh, for, in dubbing, you know, it's sort of the length of a of a of a line. You know, it uh, sometimes they just don't write enough words, and it's too short, and we have to rewrite it. Uh, I would say that that the adaptation is very important. Like, you know, when uh, when when a scene feels adapted and not just translated, when it when you get the flavor of the scene but it feels organic in English. You know, it's like, um, it's just a nice flowing scene. It doesn't feel like it's, it's translated, but it's, it's actually written. Um, uh, but I, again, like I can't, I can't say enough. We have good writers. Uh, I'm, I'm very blessed to, to work with good writers. Yeah. But, uh, here and there they could look more at the, you know, this line is longer than what you're giving me. So, uh, I would say that's my number one pick. <laughs> with writers yeah well, hopefully these guys aren't using google translate to to do these scripts <laughs> uh there there is uh no it's not google translate but there is a there's a stage you know there's there's translating it from the from the foreign language and then adapting it and, and in the adaption process is where the art comes in <laughs> yeah um uh, george from bs electric Love that name. Yeah. Yes. Must be a contractor electric. or something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> are there some particular accents that are per popular in dubbing? Uh, I don't know of a particular one, but that's another good thing about dubbing is, is you can, you can have actors from all over the world. If they speak English, we probably could use their, their accent. You know, if it's a, uh, I've, Again, I've recorded Serbian ac accents, French accents, German accents. Uh, it's it's it can all be used. So it's not one in particular that we're looking for, but based on you know whatever show comes in, we we definitely need all kinds of accents. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Do, do people have to do different accents? If you know, say they're a regular English speaker, you know, and. Mm -hmm a character has an accent, mm -hmm. you know, is, is that part of the casting? You, you say, can you do a, a British accent or can you do a French uh, accent? Or? I am against it because we can find British speak, British speakers in LA, British speakers, uh, British people in LA. Um, and, and they will sound much better than Americans trying to speak British. And the, the problem is just, that you have to keep it up for, you know, weeks. So you may be able to do a French accent for four hours, but not for three weeks straight. And you have to be consistent uh, to bring in the exact same amount of, um, of, of accent. So I feel like it, it, it's better to have that accent uh, natively. But I, I've had, I've worked with a, an actor who, did not speak the language at all, just uh, made the sounds like that language. So she studied that that scene and delivered it in, in that language in perfectly. And uh, yeah, didn't speak the language at all. And, and, you know, that's sort of a problem because, you know, you'd have to read that other language. So, yeah. Yeah, we got time for a couple more questions here from Hungry Boy. Um, maybe you know this, maybe you don't. Are there any agents or reps which handle dubbing work who accept samples made at home studios? That's what we call a question that is reaching <laughs> for something. Please hire me. I'm in a home <laughs> studio. Please. <laughs> I mean, home, uh, auditions are totally fine in, in a home studio. I feel like everyone, like quite literally now, everyone is doing that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wonder so, yeah, if any I, agents I, are, though. I, I haven't I, heard of any agents that are doing, you know, that are hiring for dubbing work or, or, or repping for dubbing work. I mean, we, specifically, you mean? Yeah. I mean, we've worked with uh, uh, CSD, Coast to Coast, Atlas. They all... You know, we've worked them extensively, so I, they're not. You know, they obviously wrap them for other jobs too. But they, uh, their clients, gotten a lot of work from us. So I, I don't think I, I think there's no problem with the 
record it in a uh, home booth. All right. Time for one more here. Um, from Patricia Andrea, is there a dubbing course? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, you know, how do you teach yeah. dubbing? I think it's sort of like learn on the job sort of. Yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. I actually thought about uh, about that, and I was talking to my boss about maybe creating something that it would introduce this to um, to actors because the actors that come back all the time, you know, that are regulars, they they love the work, and and you know, it's it's I don't know, it's it's just one thing about just working. You know, you create your craft and. Um, you do it for four hours a day and you know, it, it just, I think it gives actors a sort of a encouragement to just work, do the work and you are in a studio, but then all, again, you're also in the scene and you have to recreate and you have to um, bring your best. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know if there's a course, but maybe we'll, we'll try and create something uh, in, in the future. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it seems to me that the learning curve isn't that, like if you're a working actor, a screen actor, a voice actor, that the Absolutely. learning curve isn't that. Like it, learning on the job is not that big of a problem. No, I because totally you, agree. You you're going to pick it up based on this software yeah. you're using and your direction. It doesn't yeah. something. It's not something that you need to spend a copious amount of times prepping for. It sounds like. No, no, no. You don't. You don't. And and uh, if someone comes in for the first time. We'll definitely sort of warm up and uh, you know uh, get a little orientation there and, and yeah, uh, yeah totally fine yeah well Harry thanks so much for joining us tonight and thank you uh, yeah, and letting us great. know what goes on in the dubbing world it's uh, it's fun stuff I mean and you know once you if you can get it you can you know you, you go into this you know you go in the studio or you do it from the home studio uh, you know doing it remotely and you pick it up quick if you're a good actor and i think that's probably the mm -hmm. most important thing you've got to be able to not just you're not just talking you're not just reading you're, you're taking on this character so. mm -hmm. yeah and thank you guys for uh for your show you uh your 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 tech uh guidance is always appreciated <laughs> for someone who doesn't know much about the tech world <laughs> <laughs> you're not alone <laughs> oh yeah all righty all right, well, George and I will be ready to wrap things up here in just a second and get ready for Tech Talk, so don't go away. We'll be right back. Thanks, Thanks Harry. Harry. See you. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Alas Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, VoiceActorWebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hey, it's that time when we talk about Source Elements, longtime sponsors of the show, creators of all sorts of amazing tools to work apart, but together. And uh, that's what they do with Source Connect. It's, it's uh, certainly come into uh, its own big time since uh, in the last 18 months since the pandemic sent us all home. And it's established itself. It's cemented itself as being the tool of choice among many, many productions that would normally have the actors in studio if they could, because it allows them to record and direct the actor in high quality uh, as though they were just on the other side of the glass. Very high quality audio, low latency, and, uh, and very reliable. And it's, it's what is wired in at the studio 
directly into the Pro Tools session, you know, and that's why they love using it. It's, a, it's all about workflows and studios that have adopted Source Connect, it's just part of the way they do things. And if you want to be playing in that game, you need to have the right tools. So if you want to get Source Connect, which is the tool of choice for remote voiceover recording into major studios, go to source-elements.com and get set up over there. Create your account um, and set up a demo account and you can get a 15 day trial and give it a shot. If you need help, they're really helpful. And I also have training on georgethe.tech slash SC to get set up. Anyway, thanks for Source Elements. We really appreciate your support. We'll be right back to wrap it up. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. And we are back. Thanks again to uh, Harry Berkeley. That was, that was very interesting. And I think it's something that most people don't really think about. That, But it's a big thing. And if you can get work doing it, well, they say, nice work if you can get it. Anyway, uh, next week on this very show, we will be doing Tech Talk number 61. So... You know, and if you want to watch that live, you can like hang out, like and stay We're with us. We're going to record it in just a few minutes. 61, That's right. 61. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Anyway, um, we need to thank our donors of the week. Who are those? Oh, we got Robert Leadham, Yes Icon Productions, Dan Griffith, George A. Whittem, Brian Page, Rob Ryder, Patty Gibbons, Greg Thomas, Antland Productions, Shauna Pennington Baird, Thomas Pinto, Shelley Avellino, and Michael Kearns. Thank you, everyone. Those names are very, very often read on the show because they're subscribers. Yeah, Uh, You can donate a one-time deal or you can have it just recur and send us a little, little tiny bit of money, whatever is, makes you feel good. We appreciate it so much right on there on VOBS.TV. Yeah. There's a donate button. Just donate now. Anyway, uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors too, like Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials, voiceover extra source elements, Boheroes.com, voiceactorwebsites.com, and JMC Demos. All right. Thanks to Jeff Holman for doing yeoman duty in the chat room tonight, Danny mm-hmm. Burnside on Clubhouse, and Yay. our amazing technical director, who we hope is feeling better, Sue Morlino, uh, getting it done tonight. And of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Oh, by the way, Lee, because he asked, these are Audio Technica ATH2 headphones. And now, of course, he has to get some. They were made so. in the seventies, <laughs> and they wow. feel like it. <laughs> They're not very comfortable. The plastic is just a little bit worn out on them, but they sound really good. That's good. All righty. Um, well, that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for Tech Talk as we re-rack for that. Just remember, though, voiceover is not an easy business. And if you get the help and you can get your, your audio sounding the way it's supposed to look, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover body shop or VO. Some other button. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. Anyway, see you in a bit guys. Bye now.